Hi everyone, I'm Grace Silverwood and uh, I'm a wood carver and a model maker and uh, I just thought I would show you a, a little tutorial on how to make sheep and this is aimed at anyone who pretty much doesn't carve or is new to carving because it actually doesn't involve carving so, um, so here we go, it's really really tiny these are my sheep and they are literally made from three beads and a bit of wire, a bit of copper wire. Okay, right, let's start. So first of all, we need to take our cocktail stick and we need to thread the beads on. Now these go in a very certain order. So we want to take our medium one, so in this case a 75 millimeter um, bead, and we thread this one on first, and sometimes helps to twist it as you do it. And then we take our second bead, which I believe was the 10 mil one, and thread this on. Now this one has a loose hole, but it doesn't really matter. And then we take our third, bead, uh, the smallest bead, and we thread this on. Now this one usually doesn't go all the way on, it will just go where the taper ends. But that is quite handy because it acts like a stop, so these beads are quite are held in place already. But I always use PVA glue, so we'll shuffle these along and I'll get my glue and put a big blob on. I'm very generous with my glue, which uh, can work quite messy. And then uh, twist it. As you thread this one on, because it's got such a big hole, you want it to have a good coating. So, and then put a little bit extra on, but you probably don't have to. And then we'll put the, slide the third bead back up. And again, twist it as you do it. So then they're all nice and secure. You can see there's a bead of glue between the the, uh, the the beads. So what I do, you can leave that on if you want to, but what I do, so I get a bit of water on a brush and just brush it off slightly. You won't see this by the time uh, you've finished, so because PVA dries clear and uh, I, that's why I love PVA, it's one of my favourite glues and it don't smell. So there we go, that's one sheep body. So if you leave that for 24 hours to dry, in fact it could be a lot lot less because this stuff dries quite quick, but I like to leave things for 24 hours. So, and uh, if you wanted to make more than one, you could uh, double end them like I have. Here's one I made earlier or yesterday. So in theory, you can make two at each end if you wanted to. So if I put that one down. Okay, now on to the legs. So I find it helpful to keep these on the stick for as long as possible, because then you've got, whoops, then you've got a good way of holding it. So uh, right, now we need to mark the legs out. Um, for the ones that I've done, these legs just come out straight, but they have been bent slightly. What we need to do is take the center bead and mark four holes or four dots. Doesn't matter if these rub off, but I use a pen because these beads are quite shiny. A pencil doesn't really hold out. So I'll do it on the other side. 
as well. Right, so there we have it. Some dots. So the next thing to do is to get our Dremel. Put that there. And uh, start drilling. If you don't have a Dremel, you can use something called a pin vise. Um, I don't actually know where my pin vise is. I may have banished it to the de oh, no. I haven't ban banished it to the depths of hell. It's in my drawer. Right. This is a pin vise. A lot of jewellery makers use these, the, these are model makers, but I found it incredibly fiddly with these beads because they are quite hard. But you may have better luck than me. I may have a blunt drill bit. I don't know. But if you've got the patience and you're not making 20 of them like I was, then by all means use a pin vise. But I've, I've had enough of these things. So back in the drawer it goes. Right. On to my beloved Dremel. So... I will zoom in, hopefully, so you can see me drill these holes for a better look. So if I just start my Dremel and start drilling. Eight holes, or four holes in each one. So you don't want your Dremel at too fast a speed because otherwise it will career off and you don't want to snap your drill bits, which I have a very bad habit of doing. So, uh, right, so on to fitting the leg. But first of all, we're going to cut these in half. Um, if, you, if you're just having one at the end of a cocktail stick, then you don't really need to bother about this, but it's just so I've got a better hold. So I use these, well actually I shouldn't be using these, I get told off for using these. I should be using these pliers. Right, and cut. Oops, and that one's fl flown on the floor, but there we go. So now we have two separate ones. And the reason why I cut them in half, let's move that out of the way, is so I can mount them on my helping hand. And for people who don't actually know what it, or have never seen one of these before. This is usually used in soldering, um, and there's usually a magnifying glass on the on the top, which I think is utterly useless and is usually removed. But uh, this one is a very over over engineered one, um, and has very large um, handles on it and very long arms uh, but the crocodile clips are the same um, most helping hands um, look more like this one mine this is your typical helping hand and again I use this one a lot for painting because painting stuff this this small is an utter pain in the ass to do uh, with, with just your hands because you get it everywhere so these are still quite useful. So these cost about a tenner and uh, you can get them from Maplins or you used to be able to get them from Maplins. Um, um, but you can get them from most like hobby craft, things like that, you know, or eBay, everything's on eBay. So um, yeah, so this is typically what you need, but you can get away with just uh, using a peg, um, or just a normal vice, I mean a vice like this, a little vice, I have tons of vices. Um, even like uh, a, a, a G, uh, not a G clamp, a, a spring clamp or a peg or something like that. You just need, whoops, you just need to hold it in mid-air so it doesn't rotate. Or maybe not even mid -air, in mid-air, you just need it so it's, it's not going to roll over. So you could, in theory, use a clothes peg, um, but you need to have this this bit here, this bit here, so it doesn't roll. So whatever you hold it with has got a good grab on it, so it won't rotate. Right, so we now need, for the legs, our millimetre thick copper wire. And uh, these will go into the holes that we drilled. So if I now get my 
wire snips and uh, I will cut four just roughly to move that out of the way for now just four roughly it doesn't really matter what size you know they don't have to be exact because to be fair the holes are not exact so one two three four and uh this is obviously copper wire, but in theory you could use paper clips, although paper clips are really, really hard, I find, to work with and shape, but I have used them in the past, but they are very, they're not very pliable, but they ha they are the same size if you, if you needed, if you needed them. So there are, uh, are eight legs for our two sheep. Right, I think I got that right. Right, so bring back the helping hand and uh, we'll start gluing these in. So we've got our four legs. What we're going to do is we're going to take our super glue. Ideally you want a thick super glue, you don't want a thin one because you want it to be quite globby and get in the hole and not run everywhere. See when I put this bead on it's not really running off like some super glue is. And then we take our leg and we put them in our uh, pliers. Having little pliers here is a godsend. And uh, so it, this is quite fiddly to do, as you can see. So sometimes it is better just to hold it by your hand and it's probably not helping I've got whoops a camera in the way so you obviously you don't really want this plowing into your hand either so there we go there's our two legs at the moment it's not in yeah there's our two legs so we'll do the same again Hopefully that's in focus. So he looks a bit more like a spider at the moment. Well, a spider with four legs. Um, but bear with me. Trust me on this one. Um, yeah, you can see they're nice and tight. So yeah, there we go. And uh, I pop them back in the helping hand. Just to dry it, or you could use, um, like I said earlier, a peg and just put a little bit more around, not too much, otherwise, it'll look really globby. And there we go. And I usually leave that for about 24 hours. Here is our very tall sheep or creature. I suppose he looks a bit more like that, those things from the War of the Worlds. Uh, I don't know what they're called, but I'm sure someone will correct me on it. Um, and uh, the next stage is uh, lots and lots of trimming. So, uh, first of all, we need to trim the tail. So, this, this spike here that was the cocktail stick needs to go. So, take our wire snips. Yep, I know, very naughty. Shouldn't use these for cutting wood, but I don't care. So there we go, gone. So yeah, that was a very quick sort of vasectomy. <laughs> um, and now we need to trim the legs. In theory, we should trim this part off, but I like to use it so I can paint the rest and uh, use it as, a, I guess, a bit of a spigot or a handle or whatever you want to call it. But yeah, next stage is to shape the legs and trim them. So we take our pliers and we'll grab one leg and then very slightly bend it 
so hopefully my fingers aren't in the way so it looks a bit more natural rather than just these legs being splayed out um, so yeah they look a bit more a bit more animal like rather than war of the worlds like I guess so now we need to trim them and this is quite tricky but once you get the knack of it just use like your eye to trim but leave a add a bit more because I can guarantee you there'll be one leg that's too long and then they'll rock back and forth but it depends on what you're using these for so yeah you see they're still a bit long but put them on the table a level surface and uh, well he's not rocking he's not tipping over even though he's got this big long this big long uh, stick at the end he's still not but the back leg is too short so we need to trim the opposite leg and now we'll ah okay well, I was going to say now he's going to topple over but so he's still a bit long his legs so I'll trim him very slightly and that's probably when it will go wrong so hopefully I love that sound also it's uh, ideal to wear glasses when you do this because getting a piece of copper wire in your eye is not very nice so, so there we go perfect he should sit on my finger he I mean, might not because he's got a great big long stick coming out of his head there we go alright so the next stage is painting I know he's not painted you just have to trust me on this one uh, we'll trim the head off Ooh. And there is a very small bump there so what we do is sand A bit more sheep esque. So now we're going to paint him. So, again, this is where my helping hands come in handy. But if you haven't got this, you just get paint all over your fingers, or you can uh, use a, a peg, um, or you could keep this, the, uh, the spigot, the long part on if you wanted to. But the problem with that is uh, you need to cut it off eventually and you need to sand them back. So I find the legs quite helpful for holding this chap when he's being painted. So the paint that I'm using is a is an acrylic primer. I don't actually buy white acrylic because I think personally it's a waste of money. I'd rather go to a DIY store and buy basically a pot, a huge pot. You're talking 2.5 litre uh, wood primer, which is basically acrylic, and then just stick it in a barbecue bottle, barbecue sauce bowl. I love my barbecue sauce bottle, so I've never ever, well, I love my barbecue sauce, I don't eat the bottle, but um, I love, you know, just pouring it in and just reusing it, and, you know, because acrylic paint's expensive, and when you're doing jobs like this, and white, I think, is the most frequent colour I use, so... As you can see, he's turning very pale. 
Okay. The last bit is to paint his head. So the top part of his head, you want to paint white. You just want to paint the half half of it. And but if you paint too much with the black, the black will just tidy it up. And again, I leave this for a couple of hours to dry before putting the black on, otherwise you'll smear it. And you need to use his bum to grab, uh, well, hold him while you uh, paint his legs and his face. It's not very often you hear someone advising to uh, grab a sheep's bum, but... Hey ho. And there we go. So you might want to give that a couple of coats if you wanted to, but I don't really because I like the sort of rough effects because sheep don't have pure, you know, flat wool woolly uh, coat so I just leave it like that so if I get him out there we go it's looking a bit more sheep like but there we go he is all painted and uh, I'll just hold his bum for a bit longer and uh, stick him back in my holder and uh, yeah there we go all done so not sure if anyone actually wants to make sheep I don't know why but for my project I did and I thought I'd share it so uh, there we go and there's there's the there's his mate that I made earlier <laughs>